14. Balance each reaction below and write a cell schematic representing the reaction as it would occur in a galvanic cell. Then we have ClO3 minus aqueous plus MnO2 solid, which will yield Cl minus aqueous plus MnO4 minus aqueous. And we have to balance it in a basic solution. I, well, I guess we got to do it. But before we get to that, we have to basically do two things here. We have to balance this equation in a basic solution, and then we have to write a cell schematic. Now, a schematic is only used when we're talking about oxidation and reduction. So basically, this is an oxidation reduction reaction. And we basically have to write a schematic, which is basically like a blueprint, if you want to think of it that way. It's like a chemistry blueprint to talk about an equation in a different way. And we will see what the schematic looks like in a little bit. It's the easiest to basically make your schematic from your two half reactions. And that's all used when you start balancing. Now just know that a galvanic cell is just a cell that is spontaneous. It doesn't need any additional amount of energy to run this reaction. Uh, this comes to play when you're talking about your cell schematics. So when we do do the schematic, it's going to be the setup as it would be in a galvanic cell but let's start balancing. Now, if we go down here, we need to balance in a basic solution, but the first step is get the acidic answer. Oh, so we have to go through the eight steps of the acidic solution. Now, maybe this will be a refresher for you, um, but just know that these eight steps have to be set in stone. They could throw any reaction out at you, and if they say, either balance in a basic solution or an acidic solution. If you have these steps, steps, if you have these steps down, um, they could throw it out, you know, they could throw anything at you and you'll get it right. So let's just make sure we know our steps. Step one, we're going to break the equation into two half reactions. So just pick the substances that look very similar. So for example, I have ClO3 minus aqueous, and then I go on the other side and I say, which one of those looks like ClO3 minus? Well, it's this one, right? The one that has the chlorine. Chlorine goes with chlorine. And then on the flip side, if I have manganese MnO2 solid, that would hook up with MnO4 aqueous. So these two will go together. And these two will go together. It does not matter which one you write on the top or the bottom. I'll just start with the chlorine. So we have Cl. O3 minus, that's aqueous. And this will yield Cl minus, and that's aqueous. And then we have MnO2 solid yields MnO4 minus, and that's aqueous. And the first step, already done. Second step is now we're going to balance all the elements except for hydrogen and oxygen. So don't look at hydrogen and oxygen in this step, just look at the other elements. So I have one chlorine on the left, I have one chlorine on the right, so that's already balanced. And I have one Mn on the left, I have one Mn on the right, so that's already balanced. So in essence, I can just skip right over step two. Sometimes you can do that. And just know that I'm working with step two for both of these equations, then I'm going to do step three for both, step four for both, et cetera, et cetera. It's just easier this way instead of trying to do one through, you know, one through whatever it would be, one through five and then one through five, because the sixth step is where we pull them together, basically, or start pulling them together. So now, step three, balance the oxygen. Here comes the oxygen, and oxygen always before hydrogen. We're going to balance oxygen by adding H2O. So if you need one oxygen, the rule is that you have to add one H2O. So if you are looking for two oxygens to add, you need to add two H2Os. I have three oxygens on the left and no oxygens on the right. So it seems like I have to add three H2Os. 
On the bottom one, I have two oxygens and I have four oxygens. So if I have two and four, it seems like I have to add two oxygens on the left side. So that means that I have to add two H2Os. And step three is done, almost halfway through the acidic solution. Now comes step four. Now we're gonna balance the hydrogen by adding H plus. Do not forget that plus sign because that's what makes it acidic. So if I wanna add one hydrogen, I'm gonna add one H plus. So kind of the same idea. If you need two hydrogens, you'll add two H pluses. I have no hydrogens on the left side here, but if I look on my right side, I have a total of six, three times two is six. So I have to add six H pluses on the left side. On this, I have four H's and none on this side. So I have to add four H plus. And step four is done. Halfway through. Now we've, we've balanced all of the elements. Now we have to balance the charges. And this is where the electrons come into play. So we're gonna now start adding electrons, which are E minus. Remember, electrons are negative, so they're, they have a negative symbol. And you're always gonna add the electrons to the more positive side. What you wanna do is you wanna bring the more positive side down to the more negative side. So now what we're gonna do here is we're going to basically make a break. This just means that whatever was on this side stays on the left, whatever's on this side stays on the right. Now, calculating the total charges is quite simple because in this case, I don't care what the individual elements are. I don't care what the charge for MN is. I don't care what the charge for O is. I'm just looking for charges in the upper right hand corner. So let me actually just give myself a little bit more room. I think that's good enough. And in this case, I have a plus, right? I see H, I have a plus, that means a plus one, and I have six of them. So I have to multiply. Six times a plus one is an overall plus six for this, literally plus, so plus, and now I see that I have a negative charge. That's a negative one, and I only have one of them. So that's a minus one. And when I add these together, plus six minus one, that's a plus five overall charge. So we have a plus five overall charge on this side. Let's see what the overall charge is on the other side. I have a negative, that means a negative one. I only have one of them. So that's an overall negative one plus, now, in this case, I don't see a charge in the upper right-hand corner. That means that it's neutral. It has a zero charge. And three times zero is zero. So negative one plus zero is a negative one. So now I have my two uh, overall charges. Out of the plus five and the negative one, you're going to add the electrons to the more positive side. Plus five is more positive than negative one. So I know that I'm gonna add my electrons here, but how many? Well, on a number line, how many does it get to go from a five to a negative one? Keep in mind that the, the middle guy, not the middle guy, but one of the converting numbers is a zero, right? I have five to go to zero, and then I have one more to get to that negative one. So from a five to a negative one, there's a total of six electrons that I have to add. Now let's do the same for the bottom one. I don't see a charge in the upper right-hand corner. Maybe I should do this in blue just for the same colors. So that's a zero. Two times zero is zero. Plus, this didn't have a charge. So that's a zero. So zero plus zero is an overall zero, okay? And now here's a negative, that means negative one. There was only one of them. So this is a negative one plus, there was a positive one, but there was four of them. So four times a plus one is a plus four. 
So negative one plus four, that's a plus three. Okay, so I have a plus three and a zero. I add electrons to the more positive side, that's the three. How many? Well, it takes me three numbers to go from a three all the way down to a zero. So now step five is done. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to erase the charges. So pause the video if you need to. It's getting a little bit crazy over here. We don't need the charges anymore. That was just to show you how to do the, uh, the breakdown here. So just get rid of all these. That's fine for now. Okay, now step five is a really, really, really important um, step because you could find out two things. The first thing you could find out is which substance that you started with is the oxidant and which substance that you started with is the reductant. Now, what I mean what you started with is out of these four, which one is the oxidant and which one is the reductant, aka which one is the reducing agent, that's the oxidant, or which one's the oxidizing agent, that's the reductant. Now, just know that out of your starting material, your products can never be the reducing agent, oxidizing agent, or the oxidant, or the reductant. So you're at now a 50-50 shot. Is ClO3 minus the oxidant, or is it the reductant? Well, this now comes from where the electrons are on your half reaction. If we're talking about oxidation, that's the oxidant, you're always going to be losing electrons and the electrons are gonna be on the right side. In these examples, the second one has the electrons on the right side. And who got you there was the MnO2. So the MnO2 is the one that's undergoing oxidation, that's the oxidant. So the MnO2 solid is the oxidant. Maybe I could maybe bring this a little bit over. Okay, beautiful. So then the other one has to be the reductant, but let's just make sure there's six electrons on the left side. And anytime that you have electrons on the left side, you're gaining electrons. That's the oxidizing agent or the reductant. And who got you there? The ClO3 minus. So reductant ClO3 minus, and that's aqueous. So we, we answered that question, beautiful. And now the second thing that we can do at step five is we could draw the schematic. As soon as you put those electrons in, we know which one is oxidized and which one is reduced. Just like we said before, the electrons that are on the right side, just like this one, is oxidation. So I'm just gonna put ox. And the other one is the reduction because you have the electrons on the left side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to bring this over because I just wanna show you the general schematic, which is this. And maybe I'll put it, I guess I'll put it over here. So general schematic for a galvanic cell is when you show oxidation first and then reduction. Now, oxidation always happens at the anode. You could remember this by anox. The cathode, on the other hand, is where reduction happens. You could think of that as red cat or cat red, but red cat makes more sense. We already dis discovered which one was the oxidation reaction and which one was the reduction reaction. Now, this schematic is basically just saying for your oxidation, who went to who? And you could take this right from the initial stuff. We did say that the oxidation one was the MnO2 half reaction. So MnO2 solid will go to MnO4 aqueous. And that's what these dividers basically mean. That's the basically the arrow. The arrow in your equation is now gonna be the bracket. So we have Mn, O2 solid bracket, and that turns into MnO4 minus aqueous, 
Now we're going to put the double bracket. And now we're going to talk about the reduction equation. That's this. This was the ClO3 minus 1 to the ClO, the Cl minus. So the ClO3 minus, I don't know if you hear that, but there's fireworks going off and it's the middle of October. Fun. <laughs> ClO3 minus will go into Cl minus, and that's aqueous. So let me just maybe put that over there. Maybe not too much. But now we have to say to ourselves, is this good enough? This is the general schematic, or do we need a platinum catalyst? Now, if we need a platinum catalyst or a platinum inert cathode, it means the same thing. What you're going to be adding is PT solid. Now, we only add this if one of the sides does not have a solid or a gas, but only aqueous material. But if I look at my anode, aka the oxidation, I do see that I have a solid, so we're good there. But on the cathode side, I see that both materials are in my aqueous solution, my solvent. I need a solid in there, and I'm going to use the platinum. So what I'm going to do is right afterwards, it always goes after, I'm going to put a bracket, and then I'm going to put that PT solid. But now, if this is the case, you're kind of breaking up this idea that you only have one bracket in between your reduction, your cathode. So if I add a bracket here, I have to remove the bracket here, and instead we use a comma. So this type of idea only happens when you're adding that uh, platinum catalyst or that inert electrode. And this is now the final answer for your schematic. So we have the final answer for the schematic. We have the oxidant and the reductant. And now we're going to continue on with step six of our balancing. Keep in mind, we still want the, ba the basic solution answer. So we're almost there, guys. Let's, let's keep going. So step six. We now we're going to take those electrons that we just added, and we're going to balance them. We can only balance by multiplication. So I have six total electrons for the reduction side. I have three total electrons for the oxidation side. What are we going to do? Well, I can take the oxidation and times by two, because two times three is six. But you got to be fair. I have to take that two and times it by everybody. So it has to get divvied up. So let's rewrite the new oxidation equation. I will now have four H2Os plus two MnO2 solid yield, I have 2 MnO4 minus aqueous. I have 2 times 4, so I have 8 H pluses. And then I have the 6 electrons. And what I'm going to do is, maybe if I can, I'm just going to bring this equation downward because I want them to be in the same. Um, actually, what I can do is pause the video if you need to. I'm just going to erase this oxidation one. All right. So goodbye. We have a new oxidation equation. That's this one coming in. And I can basically get rid of these. We don't need them anymore. That was only for the charges. And maybe I'll just bring this down, just kind of making it nice for you guys. Okay. Everything good now. So now step six is done. Step seven, we're going to cancel out like substances on opposite sides. Basically, we're just going to simplify. That was why we wanted to get those electrons to be the same because they will cancel and they won't be in the balance equation at the end of the day. Anything else that we can cancel? Well, I do see that I have four H2Os on the left side here and I have three H2Os on the right side. 
So if I get rid of all of the H2Os, that's three of them, how many H2Os will remain? Well, if I used up three, four minus three, I just have one H2O remaining. And the same thing goes for the H plus. I see that I have six H pluses. On the left, I have eight H pluses on the right. So if I get rid of the lower number, how many will I have left? Well, eight minus six, that's two H plus. And now I can't really get rid of anything else. So I'm just going to simplify. And that's when you start adding adding up your reaction. We're now on step eight and we rewrite as one equation. All of the lefts stay on the left, all of the rights stay on the right. It does not matter which one you state first. So my acidic answer would be Cl O3 minus one aqueous, plus H2O, keep in mind that H2O is a liquid in acid bases, plus 2MnO2, solid, yields Cl minus aqueous, plus 2MnO4 minus aqueous, and then I have two H pluses. Since there's a charge that is um, aqueous, so once again, I'm just gonna say pause the video if you need to. I'm going to erase this because now we're gonna get rid ready to do the basic answer. So bye-bye. This is the only thing that really matters now. And that's aqueous. Okay, Whew. we got our acidic answer. Now from there, we just have to get the basic answer. So the first step was to get the acidic answer. Thank goodness. Now let's go to step two. Step two says, add as many OH minuses as you have H pluses on both sides, because you gotta be fair. So I scan my equation and I say, hey, here's H plus. I have two of them. So I'm gonna add as many OHs as I have H pluses. So since I have two H pluses, I'm gonna add two OH minuses and I gotta do it on both sides. So maybe I'll just take this out and I will say plus two OH minuses. That's step two. Now, finally, we're going to just simplify. We're gonna cancel out like waters if they're on opposite sides or add them if they're on the same. Let's see. Remember that if I have an H plus and it's coming together with an OH minus, that will equal a water. And if I have two H pluses and I have two OH minuses, that will get me two waters. Three H pluses, three OH minuses, that will get me three waters. So in this case, since I have two H pluses and two OH minuses, this will come together to form two H2Os, and this will cancel out. And now just look at the waters. Well, I have two H2Os, but I only have one H2O on the left side. So if I get rid of this one H2O, how many will be left? Yeah, just one H2O. Can't cancel out anything else. So now we are officially in our basic solution, which will be two OH minus, that's aqueous because it's a charge, plus the ClO3 minus, that's aqueous, plus the two MnO2 solid, which will yield the Cl minus aqueous, plus the two Mn, O4 minus, that's aqueous. And then finally, we have the one additional water that's a liquid, and this problem is done. Oh my goodness, what did you think? I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, love talking to you guys, and I hope you guys are having a great day. Maybe not after this problem, I have no idea how long this is. I'm gonna guess maybe 25 minutes, 
So please, please. Um, takes 25 seconds, not even, maybe 2.5 seconds. So just press the subscribe button just to get the word out there all over the world that this YouTube channel has, you know, existed. We've been helping so many students across the globe. It's, it's quite incredible and free education is a great thing. So thank you so much. And I'm so glad you guys are learning from this channel. Let's keep studying hard and I will talk to you in future lessons. Bye-bye.